Having talked about oxidizing and reducing alcohols, it's now worthwhile to consider our different classes of compounds as belonging to one or another oxidation state. So on the left hand side of this diagram we have the most oxidized and on the right hand side we have the most reduced. Alkanes like the one pictured here is ethane. So let's draw it out. And let's figure out the oxidation number of one of these carbons. So carbon gets all of the CH electrons and half of the CC electrons. That means inside that box we have 2467 electrons and the oxidation number is 4 minus 7 or negative 3. Could we have carbon more reduced than this? Sure in methane where the oxidation number is negative 4. Now let's go over and look at an alkyne. Here's ethyne. So here my oxidation number is 4 minus 4, I'm sorry, 4 minus 5, which equals negative 1. In an aldehyde, we have 4 minus 3 equals plus 1. Can we be more oxidized than that? Sure. I mean CO2 we'd have plus 4. Um, and then in acetic acid well, this carbon only has one electron inside its box, and so we have 4 minus 1 equals plus 3. So carboxylic acid is even further to the left, being the most oxidized. Methane is the most reduced. right? And then carbon dioxide, of course. But carbon dioxide is not an organic compound anymore. In our middle category, We've got alkenes, so there are six electrons inside that box, so we're talking an oxidation number of minus two. A primary alkyl halide we'd have to draw in the other hydrogens and now we'd see there are five electrons inside that box so minus one same with the primary alcohol Right, five electrons inside that box and four minus five equals minus one. So as we are um, switching between oxidation numbers, that's a bigger jump than say going from an alkyl halide to an alcohol where your oxidation number stays the same. So here's a revised synthetic map lots of the stuff we've done this semester 
right? And um, on the left, again, we're dealing with the most oxidized, and on the right, the most reduced. Right, we have our ways of going from an alkyne to an alkene, from an alkene to an alkane. And now we have our ways of going back as well. Alkenes have the most reactions associated with them, but we can do a lot with alkynes by the same token. An alkane to an alkyl halide that requires catalytic hal or sorry um, radical halogenation right and then we have ways of going from an alkyl halide to an alcohol right or from an alcohol back to an alkyl halide the two new reactions we learned in this chapter are thionyl chloride and phosphorus tribromide. That'll take an alcohol to an alkyl chloride with thionyl chloride or to an alkyl bromide with phosphorus tribromide. Another thing from this chapter is shuttling between alcohols and carbonyls, right? We have the oxidation and the reduction and knowing those different reagents. And we also have some ways of getting between alcohols and alkenes and alkyl halides and alkenes. You should understand the regiochemical and stereochemical outcomes of each of these reactions. Because now we can do synthesis um, that takes us all over this map. And if you want to be accurate in what you're getting, you need to know these.